Hey everybody, so I guess in today's topic, I'm gonna be explaining nested loops it looks like. So a nested loop, think of it as a loop found within the code of another loop. You have a loop, right? Any code within that loop is indented underneath that loop. Well, you could have a looping structure found within the code of another looping structure. The loop on the outside is the outer loop. The internal loop within the outer loop is known as the inner loop. Where you'll encounter nested loops, it's really situational. You could have a while loop inside of a while loop, a for loop inside of a for loop, a for loop inside of a while loop, a while loop inside of a for loop, etc. So here's a demonstration. Let's begin by displaying the numbers one through nine, but we'll use a loop. For x, x is our counter, in range one comma 10. Remember that the second number, in this case 10, that's exclusive. Then I will print our counter x. This program will print the numbers one through nine. Now we have an exercise at the end of this topic. I should probably explain this feature. So with a print statement, we end each print statement with a new line character. If I need all of these numbers on the same line, at the end of my print statement, I can add comma end equals an empty string. Normally with a print statement, each ends with a new line character, but we can set that to be something else. So when I run this again, all of these numbers are on the same line. Or you could add a different symbol, like dash or a space. Each of these characters is now separated with a space. But let's stick with an empty string. Okay, so we have used a loop to count the numbers 1 through 9. What if I would like to repeat this three times? Well, I could create another loop. 4x in range... You could say one comma four, or you could just say three, either way. Whatever code is within this loop will be executed three times. Let's cut our original for loop, then place it within the code of our new loop. Our outer loop will have this code repeat entirely three separate times. Uh, but we do have one thing we need to pay attention to. We have two counters with the same name. You'll want to be sure that they're different. Let's rename the counter of the inner loop to be y instead of x, and be sure to change that here as well. Now, when I run this code, we're completing, let's see, 27 iterations. To exit this for loop, we need to count the numbers one through nine. Once we do so, that is one iteration of the outer loop. But our outer loop is saying, hey, we still need three total iterations. Now, if you would like these on separate lines, Let's make this look a little different. Let's add each iteration of the outer loop onto a new line. So within the outer loop, but not within the inner loop, I'm going to create just a blank print statement. This will just print a new line. Let's try this again. With the inner loop, we count the numbers one through nine. After we exit the for loop, we will print a new line, then repeat this all over again until our outer loop is satisfied. So that's basically a nested loop. It's just a loop that's inside of another looping structure. So let's create a project. We're going to print a rectangle made of some symbol that we set. We'll have the user type in how many rows and columns this rectangle will have. We'll reuse this code that we have already written. So this time, let's accept some user input. Rows equals input. Enter the number of rows then we should typecast this input as an integer. Let's copy this line, paste it, change rows to columns for the second line, enter the number of columns. Then let's create a symbol. Symbol equals input, enter a symbol to use. We already have this rectangle structure, right? Think of it as the outer loop is in charge of the rows. Let's change in range three to in range rows. The inner loop will be in charge of the columns. For y in range columns, we will print our symbol, whatever the user chooses. So let's try this again. Enter the number of rows. How about four rows, 10 columns, I'll use a dollar sign. So here's our rectangle. We have four rows. 
then 10 columns. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's try it one more time. Three rows, five columns, and I'll use an asterisk. Yep, three rows, five columns. So yeah, that's a nested loop. Really, it's just a loop that's inside of another loop. The type of loop really doesn't matter, as well as what's within each loop. It's just a situation where you have a loop inside of another loop. And yeah, those are nested loops in Python.